the thing that I think about is, is Strickland way better than we thought? Is he that damn good or did Izzy have an off night? Without taking away, you know, what Strickland did, is Strickland that damn good and we just didn't see it? When you go back over his record, you're like, all right, that looks pretty good there. Well, that last fight, he did look, damn, when you think about it, he looked pretty good. You know, you go through his losses and, you know, we've talked about this off air. Strickland used to come into rain. And you, you have a story how, you know, he, he'd come in there and he said he was king of the cage champ. I don't remember him well in those days. I, I remember him a little bit, but he's always been kind of, you know, when he came into the UFC, he was kind of this blue chip recruitment. He was a big deal, fell off a little bit for whatever reason. And then now he's back. So I, I guess what I struggle with is Strickland that damn good or did Izzy just have one of those nights or is it a combination yeah. of both? It's really hard, right? Like, I respect kickboxing. I, I've sparred with Joe Schilling before and really felt like, wow, this, this, these high-level guys and the rhythm they have and the techniques that they have, I, I mean, I really respect it. Sean Strickland, to the most part, I think is self-trained. I've never heard him talk about, you know, the day <laughs> at eight years old, my dad dropped me off at Freddie Roach's gym or something yeah, like this. I, I've never really heard that. That goes with his wrestling and his jiu-jitsu, too. You know, he's just kind of one of these tough guys. So I would have to think that Adesanya is better, but that's not what we saw, right? There was something awkward about Sean Strickland. They did a stat on Sean. It was many fights ago. I want to say he was uh, fighting Jack Hermanson. But the announced team puts out a stat that Sean Strickland has the greatest defense in the middleweight division. To show you what their math was, they just looked at how many uh, punches were thrown at middleweights, how many landed versus didn't land. And Sean Strickland had the highest. He's very hard to hit. You know, he comes in with this stance, and you've never seen an MMA fighter. Sean Strickland and Chuck Liddell are the only ones that have this stance. Everybody else gets clipped, and they got caught. They got to keep their hands up. So he is very unique. I think that he surprised himself. Every now and then a fighter gets in a fight that, that isn't as hard as he thought it was going to be. Like, I maintain to this day, there was nobody more surprised that Justin Gaethje beat Tony Ferguson than Justin Gaethje. <laughs> And I think that Sean just started to feel that momentum in many ways. It wasn't the fight he was supposed to fight. He, he didn't threaten the takedown, by example. He didn't get to the clinch. He didn't put any major effort in to get the takedown to start with, which is what we all thought he was going to have to do. I mean, it was a very lazy approach back to 1993 of grappler versus striker, but it still didn't happen. It's like Sean did everything that, that Izzy wanted to do. And, and so how high level do you have to be? I mean, I got to look at that and I instantly think about, Francis and uh, Fury and go, well, yes. maybe it's not quite as hard as we think it is. Maybe you get a guy that's a little awkward. It does stuff you're not used to. I mean, th there's a lot of things that I'm accepting, but yes, to see that Sean Strickland was a better striker than Adesanya, I thought that that was, that was mind blowing. Yeah, maybe, maybe we're overthinking it. Maybe we're making the fight game too complicated. You know, you try and make it like the NFL or like baseball where a lot goes into it. A lot of planning goes into it. And then the day it's just two dudes fighting. You know, we're and and Sean Strickland's able to break it down to meat and potatoes, and you know he spars more than anybody. And there's been this trend, you know, the same as the NFL. You know, Tampa two coverage was successful, so the rest of the teams did that for the next five years until we had, until they adapted a running quarterback. They did that forever, so it's a copycat league. The UFC is the same, you know. So I think I'm going to be curious to see if fighters go look at Sean Strickland. He's the champ, man. All he does is spar. Forget all this technique we've been doing. Let's just spar. And I don't know if that's a good thing. I think it works for Sean Strickland. I don't know if it's going to work for everybody else. And I'm also curious, I want your thoughts on this, Joe. You know, you're a marketing genius, some would say. You, you, you look at your career and the way you, you know, mix it up and became infamous for a variety of reasons in your fight career. What is the UFC marketing team Monday morning when they sat around? Did, are they like, we got one. We got, here's the guy. With Sean Trudeau, he's different. Now, here's how he's different. And, and I think there's a way they can, they can run with this. I think in a world of these gimmicks that we're living in, you know, you click on YouTube, it's, you know, you know, Chael Sonnen, you know, wrestles two gay, two, two gay guys naked. And you click on it, it's you just wrestling, you know, at some camp. There's nothing to it. So there's all this fake smoke out there. There's AI coming. There, there's all this fake, you know what I'm saying? There's Instagram. It's not real. Sean Strickland is authentic as they get. And I think, and he, and he kind of, he attracts a certain fan base who are, who are, they don't have a lot of heroes. 
you know, a poor white kid grew up from nothing. And he talks about this and, you know, former neo, you know, neo Nazi and all this horrible background, you know, horrible father, horrible parents, and he's made it and he's, he's their champion. I think there's a way to market this because the, the masses are appealing to, to, to Sean Strickland. And I think if they just take away, you know, obviously he's going to say some off-putting stuff. I don't agree with everything he says, but what I do agree with, he's authentic. And that's what people, they're starving for it in comedy and podcasting and their athletes. How many times do we see a, a UFC fighter or NFL guy go, you know, it's, it, it was a perfect game plan and respect. And then, you know, I'm just whoever's next. We don't want to hear that. Tell us how you feel, man. Sean Strickland is going to tell you how he feels. The UFC just has to let him do his thing. He, he might not bring on the big Nike sponsors and the, the Burger Kings of the world, but he's what he is going to do is appeal to a mass, mass audience. So I, I think it's a good thing if they let Sean Strickland do his thing. Are you worried about it? Uh, well, to, to your point, I mean, people sure do appear to be attracted to it. Like His crowds are massive. I mean, he almost had a rocky moment where he, he flipped the Australian crowd, which appears to be a pretty cool crowd to start with, I must say. I mean, they, they're pretty opening and inviting, but, you know, even Adesanya, who's clapping for him at the end, yeah, I'm a little worried about it. I mean, early in his career, and I say this as somebody because he was at, at Reign, where, you, you know, I do have a care for him and want him to do good things. I was a little nervous. They're not going to be able to put him in these massive spots just because they can't give him a main event, just because they can't have him doing media. But... He has found a way to navigate that, and there is something uh, that does seem very real. You know, he, he was talking about the belt and saying that, you know, the belt doesn't matter. Then he asked somebody, how much can I get for it? And somebody told him <laughs> 1700 bucks, and he's like, that's not even enough money to put uh, spinners on my Honda Accent. It was just, it was one of these things, but everything that he does does work in terms of being a real guy. I think yep. that he's the least likely to, you know, be pulling up in a Ferrari tomorrow or overspending on a big house or stop going to practice because he's at the cool party. There is something very real about him. He's rough as hell. He's rough around the edges, but he's also the champion of the world. And, <laughs> you know, in America, the number one things that matter is success. He's found it. I mean, this guy's going to be really, really big. I'd love to see if he pushed back on Adesanya. I mean, I get why you do the rematch. I would just love to see where where his power lies. And Brandon, can I tell you my favorite fight going on right now? Nobody's talking about this, but for me, my favorite fight is for main event on the December pay-per-view. All the rest of the pay-per-views of the year have been announced, but for the December card, you have Conor McGregor going to social media declaring that he's fighting Chandler. Now, Conor's at least serious that he wants that date. It looks like they're not going to give it to him, but he wants it. Leon and Colby are supposed to fight this year, and the clock's ticking. That would mean that they've got a fight on the December date. Volkanovski has changed course and said, I'm no longer interested in doing Islam because I would have to wait until 24 and I want to fight to pour it this year. So that would put him on the December date. And then Sean O'Malley, before he leaves the link, ring against Sterling, not only calls for Cheeto Vera, but he calls specifically for the December date. So it, it really is interesting to find out who's got the power and who the biggest star is. And there's some of these guys that are all going for the same thing. It won't get talked about and look the same. I hope that I'm setting this up well because it really is interesting. All these guys are flexing behind the scenes. None of those guys want to be a co-main event, right? No. I mean, you got you got four champions. Someone's going to have to co-main event. They're all going to have to co-main event if Connor steps forward. I just think it's an interesting thing.